Welcome back to the RipeWave audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we are going to measure the Polk Audio Atrium 8 SDI speakers that we just purchased for the outside. So we get a relative sense of what the range of these speakers are. We're going to be measuring these against speakers we have. Now we have the uh, Polk uh, LSI M703 bookshelf speakers, large bookshelf speakers. We have the Polk LSI 15s. So we'll compare the ranges of each of these just to get a relative sense. And we'll do this near field because the outdoor speakers will be outdoors and not in the same room. Otherwise, I would probably do some measurements from the main listening position to get the sense of how that speaker interacts with the room. But since these will be in different environments, the near field should be uh, the, the the fair apples to apples comparison. So let's get on with this. I've already set the level. So this is outputting 75 dBs. In each case, we're going to be making sure we we do at, at 75 dBs. And uh, we'll go into REW here. And we'll get ready to measure this. And we'll give this a name. Polk Atrium 8 SDI. And we're just going to output this to the left speaker. So let me make sure that's still happening. And we're just going to output this to the right speaker. And that's good because we're only going to be measuring near field on the right here. Before we begin, we're looking at the published specifications for each of these speakers. Now the Atrium 8, which is the smallest on the lightest of the group, is got a frequent published frequency range of 45 hertz to 27,000 hertz. They're rated for 8 ohm at 91 decibels, which is the most efficient of the lot. Although I do question when Polk advertises 8 ohm, whether that's really 8 ohm or optimistic 8 ohms, uh, because they tend to be um, less efficient speakers. The next model that we're looking at is the LSIM 703 bookshelves, so a size larger, a little heavier, and it's a three-way speaker, and that one has a published range of 36 hertz to 40,000 hertz Again at 8 ohm, again we question whether it's really 8 ohm, but it's not as efficiently rated at, and it's rated at 88 decibels. And then finally our towers, which are sitting next to it, those are uh, LSI 15s. It goes down the lowest, which is natural given its size um, and its sub-base radiator. And so that goes down to 22 hertz, although the literature says the minus 3 dB point is really 30 hertz. So I'm glad they at least tried to you know, explain what they meant by the 22. And these, I think, are honestly rated at 4 ohm, although they might dip down below that during uh, actual run. Uh, and they're also 88 decibel efficiency. So let's get into the measurements here. And with that in mind, the with the ranges of each of these in mind, so with the lowest ones that they went down, uh, the lowest one said they went down. The lowest one was the LSI 15 that went down to 22 hertz. So I am not going to uh, start this. I'm not going to start this below 20 hertz. And the highest one said it went up to 40,000 hertz. I think that's probably a marketing spin there. But we'll put in 40. So it seems like the largest value you can put in to REW for the frequency um, is 24,000 hertz. Actually, if I hover it over, does it tell me? Yes, there it is. End frequency channel, 20 to 20,000. Wonderful. OK, let's hit start. Labeled this is Polk Atrium 
eight SDI near field. And let's center this. And adjust our zoom. And put a little smoothing on this. Put our variable smoothing. And there we go. So this is what we're looking at. I mean, really, it seems like it doesn't. I think the more honest values on this is at least around 80. The rating of 45, I think, is optimistic because there's a big drop down here. At least the way we're doing the measurements. So let's move it over to the next speaker and see how this compares, because I think differential comparisons, uh, even if I'm making some mistakes or I could uh, on the measurements, the differential at least shows you a comparative between the two. So I have the microphone approximately halfway on the speaker here, one foot away as we did with the other one. This is for the LSI M703 bookshelves, three-way speaker. I'll remove the grill here so you can see uh, there. So the microphone's pretty close to being on center with the radial ring tweeter. And this is the one they claim that goes up to 40,000 Hertz and that the base extends even lower down to 36 hertz. So let's attempt this again with the same settings. All we'll do before that though, is I want to be ensuring that our levels are the same. So I go back to the generator and see if this is around, I wanna get it around 75 decibels. And the other thing I wanted to point out is on our processor, we before we did anything, we turned the subwoofer setting off. We set the front speakers to large. Uh, we essentially wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, if we've got the full signal, the full range signal coming out the front speakers so we can do the full measurement. Turn the amplifier back on. Start the level check. Okay. So the fact that I had to raise the volume up to hit the same 75 decibels suggests that these are not quite as efficient as the atriums. And uh, so let's go ahead and do our measurement. Same range, 20 to 24,000. It's going out the right speaker. Now this looks a lot better than the previous. I'm gonna apply the smoothing. I'm going to give this the name. This is the Polk LSIM703. And we can see that it's it's much stronger. We, we level match these to 75 dB, but this is doing a lot more output on the lower range. 
Uh, they both have a power port on it, although they're applied differently. And so this one, you know, seems to be faring better. Now they claim it goes down to 36 hertz here. I think that is optimistic. If we were looking at like a 3 dB point, I would push this a little closer to, you know, 70 hertz is where I feel like the bass really starts to drop off. But the other thing we're noting here is this is a much more linear rate up through. We're stronger um, up to about 20,000 hertz. This is a lot more, um, more flat. So I, I think that's a lot better response. So at this point, let's move everything over to the, uh, the big speaker. Make sure you turn your amplifier off before moving the speaker wire. All right, we're ready to do the next one here. We're going to do the level check once again, make it sure uh, that is, is uh, again, at 75 hertz, uh, 75 decibels to begin with. Notice that I moved the speaker to the microphone. It was It's better not to, even though we're doing a near field, I, I just feel better about doing the test with the speaker in the exact same spot. So leaving the microphone in the same spot, maybe just adjusting the height a little bit, uh, still keeping the, the one foot distance, just to be as apples to apples on the comparison as possible. So we're going to do the levels one more time. This is slightly higher, so I'll bring the level down a bit. So the LSIM appears to be the less, the least efficient of the group. Uh, the most efficient being the, the atrium. So at this point, let's do the measurement. Again, the same settings and start. All right, so here is the third speaker. Well, this is interesting here uh, that the LSI 15s, which are bigger, now they're granted they're a generation older than the LSI M, is un for the most part not performing as well as the LSI M smaller bookshelf speaker. Uh, so if you're looking probably to, to uh, uh, for good performance, that's a good deal to have the, the smaller speaker that, that can perform very similarly to the, the full tower speaker and in, and in some ways outperform it. And I believe I got the smoothing on variable. Just make sure that's, yes, it was already on variable. So there you have it. Um, you know, the, the atrium, it's got this weird dip out here about 2000 Hertz, uh, which is uh, unfortunate there. So, uh, but as an outdoor speaker, we're not ex expecting as much. Uh, I think this is a good test to do when you get new speakers in, compare them to what you have, measure them, don't just, Go, now my ears, I could tell that the atriums by ear were not as, as, as rich as it is. As, I would not want them for an in-house speaker. It'll be interesting when I move them outside what they, what they are. Uh, you know, we didn't shop around for these. I wonder, you know, if we went to a different brand or whatever, would we get a, a better characteristic out of them, perhaps? But what are your thoughts? You know, how do you, you know, do you 
measure these speakers when you buy new ones and compare against what you have. I'd like to hear your, your feedback. And uh, so if you enjoyed this video, you know, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.